Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. For Tesla to reach a $2 trillion and eventual $3 trillion plus market cap, we know Tesla's energy division will need to grow from where it is today, and this growth in gigawatts deployed will need to be paired with margin expansion, which, by the way, there is a clear path to with AutoBidder and Tesla's ability to continually drive down costs with technology improvements and economies of scale. I truly believe if you can discipline yourself to learn more about the energy energy industry, you will give yourself a competitive edge as a Tesla investor, as a lot of people just check out if the topic isn't cars, batteries, or FSD. If you are someone who gets uneasy when Tesla stock drops or stagnates, you especially should be educating yourself on today's topic. The massive problem with the energy industry that Tesla is primed to disrupt, one of the final keys to unlocking the future of a multi-trillion dollar valuation. Tesla's new deal with Nofar Energy in Israel is yet another important piece to the Tesla energy division growth puzzle, not because it's a big deal in size, but because of the problems it will solve. There are transmission limits and difficulties obtaining energy storage solutions that Tesla can step in and solve, allowing more electricity to be sold using the same transmission capacity since they can sell it after dark, which will result in around 25% price decreases. But zooming out to the bigger picture, there is one crucial aspect in this space that I think is often overlooked, the dispatch curve. But before explaining this, think of AutoBidder like AI that works to help energy providers generate the most revenue from battery storage systems. This AI system improves the efficiency and timing of energy deployed and this extra competition drives down energy prices while also maximizing profits for the battery storage owners. And yes, AutoBidder can operate on small residential scales all the way up to the biggest utility scale operation. AutoBidder also functions 24-7 and starts capturing revenues the instant the battery storage is turned on. AutoBidder operates on Tesla's cloud infrastructure that seamlessly integrates with the market operators and nearly any customer network with APIs. An API just allows two applications to talk to each other. And so this AI uses algorithms to operate the dispatch behavior of the batteries, including price forecast, load forecast, energy generation forecast, dispatch optimization, and smart bidding. And with this smart bidding, market operators can customize certain parameters with a human operator to further optimize for certain functions as they see fit. So AutoBetter is just like AI to run the battery storage systems on autopilot. Not a perfect analogy, but think like FSD for batteries. And you may have seen Rohan Ma share on LinkedIn that AutoBetter is now operating on over 1.2 gigawatt hours in 2021, and this figure will continue to scale. And as it scales, so will the AI learnings as more data feeds into the algorithms that will result in more efficient operation of AutoBetter. And now look, early on, I want to mention that AutoBetter is not in a league of its own like Tesla's FSD system in terms of competitive edge, in my opinion. There is another company Fluence that was actually chosen by PG&E at Moss Landing, a project that uses Tesla batteries for storage. Fluence recently acquired AMS or Advanced Microgrid Solutions, which specialized in basically the same thing AutoBidder does. So the way Tesla is clearly in the driver's seat with full self-driving, I would argue they are not clearly in a commanding position with AI for grid storage. But with a market being massive, there is plenty of room for a few players to do very well. So back to the dispatch curve, which is really important to understand to have a handle on why battery storage and auto better are going to revolutionize the energy sector. There are problems that most everyday folks just are not aware of. To generate power, we know there are a lot of options, nuclear and coal, which operate continuously to produce a base load on one end and then the renewables on the other, which are intermittent sources like sun and wind. So as you can imagine, a grid provider is willing to offer different payments to different companies based on what they can offer. So a company offering nuclear or coal will receive a lower payment for providing a base load and a company offering renewable energy may also receive a low payment since intermittent energy can add complications. But then you have what Tesla can offer, power on demand, instantaneous power whenever it is needed, which of course is very attractive to the grid provider, which in turn commands higher payments. But here is the big problem with the energy sector today. Peaker plants are the current solution to spike in energy demand. These peaker plants kick into gear when there is high demand for energy and they typically run on gas. 
They dispatch energy in combination with the base load power plants that are supplying the baseline level of dependable electricity to meet a minimum level of demand. These peaker plants are slow, inefficient, dirty, and expensive, and I could create a video series on the drawbacks of peaker plants alone. And when you compare that system with battery storage that is much cleaner, much faster, more reliable, and more cost effective, it's really not even a conversation about the way forward and what it should be. And this is not theoretical. The superiority of the new model that Tesla is perfectly positioned to implement is already proven. Now it's just a matter of execution and paying close attention to this thread. In 2018 alone, the IEA reported $350 billion of investment funds into just the US energy sector alone. And when it comes to the grid in the United States, I think it's important to know that globally, most grids are owned by the state, whereas in the United States, almost all of the grid is privately owned. It's divided into three main regions, the Eastern Interconnection, the Western Interconnection, and the Texas Interconnected System. If you were wondering part of the reason why Texas ran into days of life-threatening situations from lack of power, this partially explains the problem. The value chain for the grid looks like this. We as retail customers interact directly with the utility companies like Penelac and National Fuel, where I'm from, and further down the chain you have distributors, transmitters, and the actual plants generating the power. For example, in the southeast United States, the transmission lines may be owned by a company like Duke Energy, but where the power is distributed, that may be owned by a municipality. Or in other states, a private company can at times control the entire value chain from the power plant to the utility company that bills you. But why does any of this matter? Storage is a new value in this value chain that is primed to blow the entire value chain up given the continuous reduction in the cost of renewable energy sources. This storage piece in the value chain solves the problem of intermittent energy, delivers a more resilient and efficient grid, and does so in an efficient and reliable way that blows up the peaker plant model, and it shouldn't be hyperbole. And to keep this episode digestible, these battery storage systems can basically buy power from the grid when it's cheap and sell it back when it's expensive, making money in the process. We can look at the Hornsdale Power Reserve in Australia, where it's possible the project will pay for itself in just two and a half years. And and this is in the early days of the technology. But back to the dispatch curve, the more volatile the grid, the more money that can be made from capitalizing on the market fluctuations. Simply put, whoever can implement and efficiently operate these large scale battery storage systems can make a lot of money while simultaneously driving down the cost for the consumer. But once again, it's a balancing act. If supply falls more than about 5% below demand, there are brownouts. And if the supply surges above the demand, electrical equipment can burn out, partially why we have surge protectors. These system operators sit in control rooms and bring different generators on and offline to maintain this balance, maintaining reserve margins of around 20% in case of sudden surges in demand or the loss of energy generation. But one of the most important things to remember when it comes to the dispatch curve is the grid is kind of like a high wire act where there is a delicate balance that needs to be maintained moment by moment, balancing supply and demand. This is called the voltage balance. The the horizontal axis represents the demand for electricity and the vertical axis shows the operating cost at which each generation source can deliver. Cost is of course a crucial factor and where the dispatch curve comes into play. Operators always want to use the cheapest suppliers first to keep the cost of electricity down. As the demand for power grows during the day, more generators will be added, increasing costs, which is done through a bidding process where suppliers decide at what price they want to offer power. But without getting too granular here, bigger spikes means more arbitrage opportunity for software like Autobidder and Fluences to make big money. Elon has said that Autobidder basically smooths out the energy grid, so Tesla can step into this space and offer battery storage and Autobidder to smooth out this dispatch curve and optimize what has been a rather inefficient process. So let's wrap this up. The thread to follow closely and put forth the effort to learn about lies in the energy sector. It is a complicated space, but hopefully this video gives us all jump off points to dive deeper into certain topics we'd like to explore further. Tesla is very well positioned to disrupt as much of the energy sector as they have the supply for, but it should be noted their competitive edge here is arguably smaller than it is on the automotive side. But once again, this market is so big and given that Tesla is supply constrained as it is, this is not at all a reason for pessimism. Tesla's autobidder will improve with each gigawatt hour of energy operated and the model will continually 
be validated. Tesla Energy is the side that separates them from any other auto company, and so anytime you hear people belaboring Tesla compared to any other auto company, just enjoy an internal chuckle because that is a fool's errand. But that's all that I have for you guys today. Please take a second to like this video if you did. Consider subscribing for more Tesla content, and I hope to see you in the next video. I hope that you have a great day. Until next time.